Hello and welcome to No Man's Sky, everybody. Alan Paul here, and we're going to be doing a normal playthrough, as you saw by the title of this whole thing. Um, yeah, I'm starting a whole new, brand new main save. So this is going to be my tertiary, if you will. I've got a main save I started back in 2019 um, that I've not really kept up with. Uh, I've got another main save I started back in, I don't know, about a year and a half ago that is really well along, but I really don't want to mess with too much because it's getting to the point where we've gotten some upgrades that I really, really like, like the new Dreadnought, and I don't really want to mess with the freighter, uh, yeah, with the uh, freighter I've got right now. So I'm going to start a whole new save from scratch. Um, probably going to be doing story mode. We're going to do story mode the whole way, and we're just going to do it in normal and uh, we may be doing a little bit of uh, fade out, fade in type things as you see me go through uh, and do some stuff. But we're going to do story mode as far as we can uh, to the center of the, you know, not to the center of the galaxy, of course, but basically to the end of the Artemis storyline. Um, we're going to do the Atlas storyline. We're going to do all the storylines as we can. And we'll build out our base and we'll acquire money. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some money making things and some nanite farming, things like that. I've got a lot of looking around to do. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, as usual play game I'm gonna start a new game you see I don't really have much in here I got my record-breaking Omega run that I want to keep in there for a little bit here's my first main save that I've dedicated about 220 hours to and my current main save that I've got another 340 on there so between the two of them there well yeah you can do the math you know 600 hours of playing right there uh, not to mention all the other playthroughs I've done I've got a permadeath playthrough I've been doing uh, uh, some uh, episodes on if you will that have come out every Wednesday um, and up until the last episode that you saw well now you're seeing the new playthrough that's gonna come out every Wednesday and we might even do this on a live stream on occasion where I'll just play for several hours and get some stuff done and we can chat while we're talking while we're playing and everything like that so that'll be great so let's go ahead and get started new game we're gonna do normal mode we're not gonna do relaxed or creative we're not doing anything custom or survival we're gonna do normal mode and let's just go ahead and get started and as always welcome to no man's sky this is probably by far the game I, I mean granted like I said I've been playing since 2019 myself since uh, just before COVID hit uh, here in the US um, we basically I started this and around just to give you a background story I had a friend I, I was working with who told me about it because I was majorly into the Microsoft, the old Microsoft game called Freelancer. And he told me about No Man's Sky. And he says, you know what? You can get it right now. It's on sale. So I did it. It was around, I don't know, September when one of their expeditions had come out. And I bought it for like 30 bucks. I didn't play it at first. I let it go. And it was around October, late October, I decided to try it out. And I played it in creative mode because I figured I can learn something in creative mode. Boy, was I wrong. It was the wrong mode to play in. You definitely want to always start this game in normal mode. And there was really nothing to go by. I mean, Jason from Jason Plays was doing some stuff, and I was keeping an eye on him, and that was great. But I just wasn't doing a whole heck of a lot at this point. So I decided, you know, let me pull back again. And I started watching Jason Plays, a little bit of Zane from Zane's World, a little bit of Beeble Bum. I started watching other players play, and I was like, oh, that's how you play it. Okay, so I did normal mode, and I realized, oh, it's teaching me how to play. Okay, well, that's great. Uh, so we'll get started, and I'm going to go into some of the background stories as we go. So let's go ahead and begin initialization. Now, the volume on the game is a little low. I'm going to increase the volume here in just a moment. Ooh, coal planet. So we'll just jump over here real quick. We'll get that volume turned up. All right, and we may turn the game volume up just a little bit more in-game in the settings menu here in just a moment so you can hear some more. So the first thing I'm recognizing, Old Planet. We don't know what's going on. If you've never played the game before, you're trying to figure out what in the world is happening. Okay, so I have a jetpack. I have a shield that's come up. I've got all these weird plants and strange animals, and I can see snow falling. Okay, so I've got a multi-tool. Great. All right, first contact. Now, you notice I am in first-person mode. I don't like first-person mode. I'm going to change it immediately to third-person. I prefer this. 
So you see, it's it, we're dropping here. We need to find shelter and find it immediately. Uh, we have a laser. So we're going to go ahead and grab these red crystals over here. These are very, very handy. Condensed carbon is what they are. You do need ferrite, and you get it from these little rocks here. But you can get it from the bigger rocks too, but you may not have the lasers available to hit those bigger rocks like that, say. So we're going to go ahead and pick up the littler rocks. Like this one right here looks like it's going to give us something. All right, let's see. we got about 25 ferrite. So try to get as many of that as you can. We also need carbon. Carbon's going to be hard to come by on this planet, it looks like. But what plants we do find that have carbon will be very, very handy. I'm going to get some more of these rocks. See, these little rock pieces down here are giving us, you know, some of this ferrite dust. We want to get as much of that as we can right now. You see the screen is getting frosty. Danger, danger, danger. Look, a heat warning is coming up for our laser. Okay, looks like we got close to 300 of this stuff. Oh. <laughs> Don't let that surprise you. Occasionally some of the rocks are not rocks. They won't attack you. It's okay, it's just there to shock you a little bit and go, Whoa, hey, what happened? All right, 300 we've got. Look for plants that you can shoot. They'll, they'll show up on your radar here. Not seeing a whole lot of any. Seeing lots of rocks and seeing some animals, but I can't really scan because I don't have a visor installed. I need to find shelter. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean a... Uh, like a building or something like that. If I can find a cave, that would be good. See, there's more of these red crystals over here. I'll show you how to do that, uh, by the way, that thrust and jump. See, your rocket pack... When you hit your space bar, boosts you up in the air, and if you're moving forward, of course, you can go forward. But if you thrust with your arm like that, which allows you to break things like this, see, you can get stuff out of it if you run out of uh, your laser, but that's not what we're looking for. Ooh, and grab veggies while you're on the way. These frozen tubers, very handy. The blue crystals, also very handy. Dihydrogen is what this is called, and it's necessary for certain items you might need. For instance, uh, you might need it for life support crystals and things like that, life support uh, modules. So grab some of that while you can. We're looking for a hole in the ground. I know that sounds really, really weird, but if you thrust, by the way, we didn't touch on that real quick. Let's grab the sodium, too, while we're here. We'll need that. We need more sodium if we can find some. Looks like we got some more blue crystals down there. Now, our temperature isn't dropping right away. They give you a break at the beginning of the game, but as the game progresses, it'll start dropping quicker. So you got to keep an eye on it. And these plants here that are up here, they don't give you carbon. Like this one here gives us carbon. Let's see what we get out of it. Ooh, we got to put a bunch of carbon. But that plant gives us oxygen from these little gassy pods on the sides. And then once you get all three, go for the plant itself. But when they explode like that, they can hurt you, so step step back. All right, I'm just going to keep running around this general area. I know there's got to be a cave here someplace. I've got carbon, condensed carbon. I've got dihydrogen and ferrite. I've got some of the main principles, and I also need sodium, these little yellow plants like this one right here. And as we look around, look for more of those yellow plants, but look for a cave, because a cave can be very, very handy for you right now. It's how we protect ourselves. Once we're in a cave, we can get more stuff. We, we can recover, if you will, our heat. Well, it really is giving us a break today, isn't it? There's another yellow plant over here. I'm going to grab it. In place of things that you can't... Like, for instance, if I can't find a cave, you need the sodium to recharge your shield. So grab the sodium as you come across it. Most of the times on the planets, you won't get injured... But you got to be careful. Like you see, I'm a little bit injured at the top left. I got three hearts, three plus signs, if you will. And I've got. Ooh, is that a cave? No, it is not. It is just a dip in the ground. I'm getting hurt for some reason. I got to check to see what's hurting. I didn't think I damaged myself. I didn't. But for some reason, it indicates that I've been hurt. And I don't know why. And that I keep getting hurt. I'm going to get more of these blue crystals so I can use them. Oh, depleted. So we can charge it with carbon or condensed carbon. I'm going to use the condensed carbon because it's more, um, the word I'm looking for is efficient. 
Oh, some more crystals right here. Let's grab those real quick. And our temperature thing is dropping rapidly. We need to get that cave, or we need a lot more sodium. I see sodium over there. Let's go ahead and grab some. See, if you fall from a decent height, you can injure yourself. More plants. I'm going to grab these real quick because I can use the carbon. Get a lot of carbon out of these one plants because there's not many plants on the planet. The plants that are there give you more carbon. More frozen tubers over there. We're going to grab those. All right. Not sure. I don't remember what they do for you, but we'll check that in a minute. Is this a cave? It is a cave. Okay, we found ourselves a cave. This is how you know a cave. You can see stalactites and stalagmites in it. But there are some plants occasionally that can hurt you, so be careful. There you go. See? Recovering? Great. Let that blue bar go all the way up. Now, while you're at it, you can see that these things here, cobalt, you need cobalt as well. That's one more main element you need. Once I got enough of it, we're going to go into our inventory and take a look at what we have. All right. Good. 70... I'd like to get a couple hundred of it, if I can. So the premise is, is that you don't know who you are, where you're from, what's going on. You have no idea what happened. Oh, well, we got a crystal out of that, too. So let's we'll get a little bit more cobalt. All right, that should be good. All right, so let's see what we've got in our inventory and take a look. First of all, it's telling us that our scanner is damaged. We use ferrite dust that we gathered earlier to get that. So let's go ahead and put that in. But we also need to put in this analysis visor. See, it's, it's telling us that we've achieved something. You can tell by the music. You've achieved a goal. That's exactly what you needed. So, okay, it's detecting our ship's signal. You want to look around, and you can see there it is in the distance. And it tells you how far away, 990 units away. We got a little bit of walking to do. So before we head that way, let's take a look again at our inventory. So when I look in here, I've got, here's my frozen tubers, and you see if you consume it, you get 5% life support back. So you now have a life support to bring this up. See so if I eat one, 76, 81, 86, 80, 91, 96, and 100. All right, geodes. We got these from the cobalt, so we should get either more cobalt or something called ionized cobalt. Looks like we got ionized out of that one. And again, ionized out of that one. So we have 100 ionized and 220 regular. The ionized is very handy. Most of the elements you gather in this game are going to be very, very important for you to have. You have condensed carbon. Let's move some things around so we can put things together, right? There we go. Okay. So you have condensed carbon. You have regular carbon. I have 600 right now. That's used, as you can see, um, for recharging mining equipment. Um, you get it from trees, plants, and all forms of vegetables. And as far as these, the carbon is concerned, it's also used in creating other things, as we'll learn later on. Condensed carbon can also be used to create things, but it's a condensed form, and you can use a lot less of this than you would regular carbon to charge equipment up. Oxygen, of course, as you might imagine, can be used in your life support. See? Pumps breathable oxygen, so you can drop some in there. But you can also get life support from plants. So hang on to the oxygen. It's very handy to have, obviously. You have something called dihydrogen, and dihydrogen is used in several different recipes that you can make certain things as you go along. The dihydrogen is also used in crafting some things too. And in this instance, if we want to craft a life support gel, which will recharge our life support up to 100%, it requires carbon and one dihydrogen jelly. To get a dihydrogen jelly, you need 40 dihydrogen. So I'm going to make one right now. I like to have one as a backup, and I'm going to put it over here in our bottom rightmost spot. So we have a we have one life support gel in case we need it later on. You see it used up some of our dihydrogen our high dihydrogen there, yes. You'll notice two other things. We have sodium. You also have a condensed portion portion of it called sodium nitrate. Um, both of these are used in a great many things in order to uh, get by many, many different recipes. It's also used to recharge your hazard protection, but you can also use ion batteries to do that as well. We'll get to that in a moment. Finally, you have ferrite dust, and it comes in three forms. You have this regular ferrite dust. You have another form called pure ferrite, and then a final form of it called magnetized ferrite. You can use crafting equipment like a refiner to make ferrite into pure ferrite. It's a one-to-one -one ratio, so if I do 277 ferrite and I put it in a refiner, I'll get 277 pure ferrite. 
seems obvious, right? However, if you take pure ferrite and put it back in the refiner, you'll get magnetized ferrite. And it's a 2 to 1 ratio in that case. So if I put 200 pure ferrite in, I'll get 100 magnetized, as you might imagine. The same thing for cobalt. It's 2 to 1. So this 220 cobalt will make 110 ionized cobalt. Again, ionized is used in different recipes, so you, can, you definitely do need it. Finally, you have carbon and condensed carbon. The ratio is the same, 2 to 1. So there you have it. There's most of your base elements. Sodium is very handy to get, so try to get as much of it as you can early on to recharge your hazard protection. But if you stumble across a cave like we did, you have the ability to make something called an ion battery. It requires 10 cobalt that we just got from these rocks, from the stalactites and stalagmites, and 5 ferrite dust. So I'm going to create, I like to, whenever I'm wandering around a planet, I like to have at least about 10 of these on me. So I'm going to create one, and then if I hit the E button, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, I now have a total of 10 ion batteries. It used up some of the stuff that we had in our inventory, so be it. Now, if you look at your exosuit at the top here under technology, you have what looks like a, the appearance of many more slots, but you don't have access to them yet. Right now, all you have is this bottom seven right here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and these three up above it for 10 slots. You can expand this later on with expansion slots from drop pods from different many things, and you'll see that as we progress in the game. So we have a cargo area down at the bottom. Right now you can see it's limited in the amount of space we have, but we can fill all these in again with those same cargo pods as we see fit. And we'll show you a little trick on how to do that. Um, our starship we're not near right now. We're going to go back to our multi-tool. We have our scanner, so we're going to put our scanner in here. We're going to put it over to the side, and we have our mining beam. You notice our mining beam says technology supercharged, though. Let's move that over for a moment. A lot of your... Um, multi-tools can have supercharged slots. It's rare to have a C-class one, which is the lowest class multi-tool, to have a supercharged slot, but I'm fortunate to have gotten one. So I'm going to keep my mining beam there. What happens is by putting it in the supercharged slot, it makes it more efficient. So I can pick up more minerals and it doesn't heat up as fast. It's very nice to have it in there. Uh, I also need something in here called, well, let's talk about the scanner for a second. The scanner here allows us to um, emit a high energy pulse and reveals any survival resources that are around us. So for instance, if I hit the C button right now, it does a scan. You'll notice that now I have some carbon crystals over there, condensed carbon. I've got sodium this way, dihydrogen, more, di more uh, sodium, oxygen plants. Um, so we've got some, some basic necessities around us, included a deuterium rich plant, which allows us to get a supercharge for our jetpack for a limited time. All right. So far, so good. We do definitely need an analysis visor, though. The analysis visor allows us to generate valuable data by studying the flora, the fauna, the minerals that are on the planet, those kind of things. It's good. It's very, very necessary to have. And as you can see, to build one, I am required to make a carbon nanotube. So I can create this right now, but I don't have the carbon nanotube to finalize it. What I can do, though, is I can make it in my inventory, in my cargo area over here, Carbon nanotube requires 50 carbon. So let's make one. Let's go ahead and put it in here. And we now have an analysis visor. What does that do for us? This allows us to look at things. Like, for instance, when I look at these things, the un unidentified mineral, it says cobalt. And I look at it through my analysis visor by holding the F button down. I can scan it with my left mouse button. And it tells me the name of the item and what it gives me. Now, that doesn't seem to be very valuable at the moment, but if you look at other items and they say, like for instance, this says pure ferrite, and then it says analyze with question marks. If I scan this item, it tells me not only the primary, which is pure ferrite, but it has a secondary element of dihydrogen, which we won't get unless we scan the item. Now, again, we're looking at stalagmites right now. They only have one item in them, but if we look at up above at the stalactites hanging from the ceiling, and we scan one of those, you see they have a secondary element and it's tritium. Tritium is an element that's used in shipbuilding. Uh, not necessarily shipbuilding itself, but it's used in the engines that are on the ship. So it's good to get some of that. You will get some later on. It's not important. But one thing you can do is as you're looking around at these uh, cobalt stalagmites and stalactites, occasionally you'll run across one that is not made of cobalt. For instance, if we go down here, I think I saw one earlier by accident. Here's one made of gold. That's a very handy element to have. Obviously, it's valuable, but 
but it's also helped in certain building materials. Usually you get just a little bit of gold out of it. You may not find any more in here in just one cave, but in some caves you'll find a lot more of these. Let's take a look around real quick because I can use some of these elements to make things. Cobalt tritium, cobalt tritium, even the ceiling ones. Oh, there's one that has gold as well. The three elements you'll find are gold, silver, and platinum. All three are necessary building materials, so by all means. And you see this plant right there? That hazardous flora can give us sodium if we shoot it. There we go. But if you stand too close to it, it will emit gases that can harm you. And bring down your shields. Oh, looks like we have something else over here. Looks like we have gold again. Really like some silver, but that's okay. All right. So they don't, they're not very popular, but you do find them more often than not. Every 50 or so, you'll probably find one. I'm going to take another look around just in case. The cave's a little deeper than I expected it to be. There we go. Okay, good deal. So this is kind of a training playthrough, but we're going to do the storyline as well. And you guys can sit back and enjoy this. Have a snack. Hear that? If you listen carefully, you can hear them. Now, you probably can't hear them too well, so I'm going to go into my options menu here, into my general settings, and I'm going to bring my audio levels up. The sound effects, we're going to bring them up to about 35 right now. Maybe a little bit more music as well. Apply. Okay, good. That way you can hear more of what's going on. I don't usually keep the volume up too high because it will drown me out occasionally. I don't know if you notice, but I kind of have a deeper voice than most. And I tend to get a little bit quiet when I'm playing. And when I'm playing and I'm quiet, it's harder to hear me. Let's be clear about that. So, let me see here. It looks like we've got some plants in here. Car cave marrow. Cave marrow is kind of handy if you want to go ahead and get that. If you refine it, you can get sodium out of it. All right, I think we're going to be heading out of here. I don't think we're going to find much more that we need. Let me show you what happens when we get the tritium as well. So you see the cobalt comes in. We get, look at the top right, 23 cobalt, and then it changes over and tells you you only got 5 tritium. You get smaller amounts of the secondary item. But they still are handy to get, so get what you can. All right. Navigation basics, it's starting to get into the point where it's asking me, hey, you really need to move along here, buddy. So I think we're going to get going. Let's take out this last plant, get a little bit more sodium. These plants will have one of two things, either sodium or oxygen. Yep, there's one that has oxygen right behind it. There we go. Okay. Let's go ahead and head out of here, shall we? So we're going to find a way out of the cave. Oh, you see these things here? These are called vortex cubes, subterranean relics. You can pick these up. They are... They, they're worth something. Let's just put it that way. Not worth a lot. About 10 grand. That sounds like a lot. It really is not. Trust me on this. There are items in this game worth a lot more than that. So you'll see if we look in our inventory. See, 17,000 units. They're not even worth that much. They're, fifth, they're less than 6,000 a piece. So, alright. Let's go ahead and move on. Let's get out of this cave. Oh, there we go. Okay, we're out. All right, so our ship is this way. Like I said, my jetpack runs out of fuel on occasion. See, it's recharging right now. But these little blue plants called deuterium are very handy. If you take one, your jetpack is surged. And if you do a thrust jump, you can really get far. You can also shoot while you're going and pick up items. I'm going to stop because it's actually, this stuff is worth a lot more to me, to me than the jetpack surge that I'm giving up on. All right. Then you see these animals here? You can scan them too, but I'm going to hold off scanning them for now. Actually, I am going to scan one. Watch this. So it tells me everything about the animal. Orthogonal, uh, anxious, gravitino balls is their diet. They have nutritious, their notes, uh, nutritious feces. And leopard fruit. Okay. So there you go. And then you can see they're not going to attack me either. Okay. So they're not dangerous to me. And we'll take a look at other animals as we go. There's a little guy over here. Let's take a look at him. Again, tends plants and likes rotting fruit. 
Now, if it said they were vicious or something like that, methodical and likes rotting fruit, so there's three of them, then I'd be in trouble. But you notice at the bottom right, it tells me I've found three of the six species on this planet. Let's see what happens. We're going to get a fourth one. He remembers faces, and he likes grass. Kind of hard to find on a frozen planet, but that's okay. Ooh, this planet has salvage containers. That means it's got some valuable materials on the planet. All right, let's head to the ship, shall we? And we'll get some stuff along the way. I'm going to hold off. Well, you know what? Let me get some more carbon. Carbon's handy. Might as well get it. Oop, more crystals. We'll grab some of those. These blue crystals are very, very handy. Get them while you can. There we go. Okay, looks like we are 500 units away. Every now and then you're running, I call it run juice. If you look at the bottom right, you can see your jetpack has fuel. You're running, you can run for distances, but you can see you're getting get tired. And once it turns red, you can't run anymore. Now running up slopes also does has an impact too. See, now I run slower when it turned red. And it takes a little bit to recharge. And you get to spots where it turns red completely. It means you literally can't walk up the slope. Use your jetpack to get up these slopes. And if it runs out, that's okay. Just let it charge a little bit at a time. And you'll bump boost up is what I call it. There we go. All right. We're up to the top. A little bit annoying, but there we go. That's okay. And now, if you hit the escape button, you can get more information on that. So, navigation basis, basics, it'll tell you some of the things you need to know about surviving on the planet. And I'll let you read that at your own leisure. If you'd like to go ahead and hit pause at this point and read that, go right ahead. I'm going to continue on. Now, it looks like we have some sodium in front of us, three plants of it. I'm going to grab that while I can. There we go. Got all three? Yep, got all three. Looks like our ship is just ahead. Whoops. <laughs> Ran out of charge. And there we go. And it looks like we are near a cave as well. How interesting. Any animals we have not scanned yet? No. Doesn't look like it. All right. Always look around for red dots. Red dots means animals you haven't scanned. And if you're curious about the animals, if you go to your discovery menu and you select fauna... It'll tell you about the things you found, and it'll tell you about the two things you haven't. So I got one that's underground and rare, and another one that's uncommon, but it's a flying creature. All right. And underground creatures sometimes go near these caves and will inhabit near them. They'll be crawling around outside. So it's a good idea. Looks like we've got another cave on the far side near our ship. And obviously flying creatures, you just want to look at the sky and just look for any red dots floating around up there. I don't see anything at the moment. They're uncommon, so they may not show up until later. But it's a good idea to try to find all of them. You see that thing down there? Yeah, that's good to know about buried technology. We'll get to that later. Alright. So it's heading, heading us to this. This iteration and a long number. Let's see what happens when we select that. So, iteration 2311-8766-1, T, deleted, boundary separation failure likely. Vessel 16, empty, pause, sentinel, intervention, deliberate transfer. So, it's telling us that this particular navigation device is letting us know that this vessel that we had here was deliberately um, emptied, if you will and stopped from doing whatever it was doing. Now, as you might imagine, this is our vessel. So we were deliberately taken out of this vessel, and we have just woken up on this planet a thousand blocks away, not understanding what's going on. The analysis, fresh iteration generated, anomaly containment prepared. So we are a fresh iteration of what? Interesting, right? So you're going to learn this as you go along. Anomaly containment prepared, well... 
That's interesting. So should we broadcast or just leave the area? I'm going to go ahead and broadcast, as I usually do. Broadcast received. Traveler anomaly detected. So that's what we are. We're a traveler. Anomaly is compliant. Position logged. System integrity scan initialized. That sounds kind of scary. That yes, we're compliant and you've logged my position. So you know where I am. That's okay. You're allowed to know where I am. Don't worry about it. And there we go. So we've got a little bit more storyline. Now, one thing we noticed, we've got some, some contraptions over here. We can try to open up every one of these. The yellow container first. We just got some condensed carbon out of it. The little guys are always the best ones to get. One's giving us sodium and the other oxygen. Just a few. This damage container gives us some rusted metal, which we can turn into something if you wish. I'm just going to delete it for now. And then when it opens, it gives us... Looks like more oxygen, so added to the oxygen and we open up the other one. Finally, we have some damaged machinery. It has feces on it. If you can't imagine what that is, look it up in the dictionary, folks. Yeah, it's poop. Anyway, it says it can be harvested from gut rat flour, but don't worry about it. We'll worry about it later anyway. So we're going to delete it. We don't need it right now. And when it opens, it's going to give us something. Usually it gives us something called nanites. There you are. I got 26 nanites out of that. So we've gathered up some resources as we went. We've also got this cave over here. I'm once again going to take one more look. Just in case there's a red dot floating around outside. I can scan. I don't see anything. It's daylight now. I'm going to look around the sky and see if there's any... There we go. There we go. There's the bird. I zoomed in on it with my right mouse button. Mostly cautious and has a diet of rocks. Fascinating. So we've got five of the six animals. The last one left is a cave-dwelling animal. So we'll keep an eye open for them as we go. All right, so we got to board the crashed ship. Let's get inside. Radiant Pillar PC-1. Iteration, it's got the same thing again, same number followed by a G. Online. Atlas Connection. Intermittent. Launch thrusters. Offline. Pulse engine. Offline. I find myself alone in a strange world. Unequipped and in danger. I have no memory of how I got here. No sense of a before. But this ship at least seems to recognize me. The controls react to my touch, or at least to that of my exosuit. I'm not dead yet, and this ship is a lifeline out to the stars. Let's read the log. Log 4925A. Unavailable. Substituting data. Exosuit. Connected. Suggestion. Pilot should perform maintenance. Select desired repair path. So it looks like the log is damaged, if you will. We're not going to get that information back. But the ship is telling us we need to start performing maintenance and repairs. So we're going to repair ship systems. Self-guided repair protocols initiated. Okay. So it's telling us that the pulse engine is critically damaged and we need a hermetic seal and metal plating. So launch thrust is critically damaged, as you see at the bottom right. So it tells us to hit the E button to exit. So we're going to hit E. We're going to exit the ship again. Okay. Oh, and there's our guidance right there. So recommended to repair ship engines. And we need crafted products, salvageable items, and refined substances. Repair pulse engines with metal plating. Uh, we also have to repair the pulse engine with medic seal. The launch thrusters with dihydrogen jelly, which we know we can make. And repair launch thrusters with pure ferrite. Let's continue. So the thing we got, we need to collect dust, which we've done. So we're going to need to craft metal plating. It's telling us to do that. So we go in here, and here's our ship, by the way, right? We got a deflector shield. We can put these anywhere. If you hit the E button, you can move stuff around if you wish. And we got uh, what looks like photon cannons, which do a little bit of damage, and some rocket launchers. So those are going to be coming handy. Let's go ahead and make this metal plate it's telling us to make. And it tells us to go into the pulse engine and repair that section. Okay, exit this area, and it tells us the next stage. Just give it a couple moments. Partially complete. Board the space, starship and consult ship diagnostics. Let's go back in. Iteration. Same thing again. That same number. Functional. Starship critically damaged. Vital ingredients missing. Unable to synthesize required components. Pulse engine requires a medic seal. Request assistance. Recommendation. Iteration comparison reveals her medic seal nearby. Salvage planetary chart from distress beacon cache. Okay, so we got to get out of the ship and we're going to find a map to the hermetic seal. So let's exit the ship. 
We're gonna head over here. And we're going to go in here and see what it says. I peer inside the beacon's housing. As well as its distress broadcast unit, it contains a planetary chart. Take the planetary chart. So now we have it. So what do we do with that? So we're going to hit the tab button, and, it's, and you'll notice in our inventory we have this planetary chart that's, you know, pulsing. And it says to press E to plot a route. So we're going to hit E, and it does this big pullback. Now we're looking from space, just about, looking down at ourselves. You notice all the way to the north there is that little red beacon. We're going to head that way to find a hermetic seal. So we're going on a little bit of a journey. I'm going to warn you all in advance right now. You're about to be hit by a storm, so be prepared. You need those batteries I mentioned, so make sure you have some. Also, a secondary thing you can grab is this item here, and we'll come back for it in a little bit. For now... We're going to run this way, and any time now, the storm is going to hit. One quick look around. I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay. And I'm going to do jetpack pulsing to different areas so I can get places a little quicker. So again, you do the thrust with your with your elbow, and then you pulse. Uh, pardon me, then you, then you hit your rocket pack. So thrust, and then you hit your rocket pack. Ooh, we got some condensed carbon. Let's hit that. Don't have to hit the ground too hard. You could really damage things, okay? Just a little heads up. We can't get the big ones, but we can get the little ones of that. And even the little ones, even that 15 is worth a lot more than you can imagine. Ah, okay. So we have this here. We have more. We have more condensed carbon. Let's go ahead and grab it. The big one we can't get. But you'll also notice that even though it's an incoming storm, we saw something here. Didn't I see it? Ah, here it is. Some more sodium. Let's grab that. That's very, very handy. We're going to look around real quick because you never know when you might find something. I think we're okay. Let's keep going. You'll notice the temperature at the bottom left is starting to drop rapidly. Okay, and as it drops rapidly, it's going to push down our old gauge on there real fast. It's getting colder and colder and colder. Looks like we've stopped at about uh, just shy of 140 below zero. So that's pretty darn cold. And I just dropped a little distance. I'm actually having trouble seeing. That's okay. Head towards the red beacon. And you'll notice that there's a couple of buildings there. So head towards those buildings. And it'll warn you in advance. And head inside one of the buildings. And... There you go. Temperature level stabilized. So you can make it before the storm is, you know, is really going to damage you. So here we go. We've gone into the computer here. Accessing archive. Six of seven logs corrupted. How unfortunate. Entry 4924A follows. So you notice that we were at G. Now we're back to A for some reason. No one. And those little buzzing things are like breaks, like you might say, static in the recording. No one... Psst, Makes making this recording in case bzz, leaving behind bzz, in the fabricator bzz, might be of some use. So someone made this recording, but strangely enough, it's just like the number you had back at your other thing. Was it a different iteration of yourself that made this recording? Bzz, visor damaged. Bzz, can't find ship. They had no way to repair their visor. They most likely ceased to exist. We're going to recover the supplies. And here it is. The log finishes and the machine whirs to life, spitting out supplies. I have the hermetic seal. I need to repair my ship. Whoever it was that led me here, whoever left this message, perhaps they found themselves in the same situation as I do now? Indeed. All right, so we've got what we need. And there's nothing else usable in here. That little device on the wall is nothing more than show. I'm going to check out the building next to us. Always a good idea, including this damaged machinery. This one has feces as well, go figure. Oh, and the storm's clearing, so it's a good time to head back. Ooh, it gave us toxic protection module. That is really handy. We're gonna use that? Oh, well, there's nothing in here at all. Wow, this place is empty. We're gonna go ahead and put it in our in our inventory up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this and I'm gonna put it up here. And if you put it near your shield, it'll give a little bit of a booster. That's why they're surrounded by white. It won't help us on this planet, but it could help us on planets down the road. You notice my life support's down to 41. 
Let's go ahead and eat some of those tubers and get it back up to 60s. All right. Now the storm's over. You see the temperature's back down to a negative 64. Now you notice there's some berry technology here. So a little trick here. You can't quite reach it with any things you have here. You don't have anything to dig it up with. But if you go back into first person view and look down, you can sometimes access devices underground. And you can gather the salvage data. We're going to do that again when we get back to our place. There's a big cave system here. I'm going to take a quick look and see if we can get that sixth animal. Because very handy to get those animals. Let's go ahead and head in here. And hope that a little red dot pops up on our scope. Usually it does. With a, with a bigger area like this, usually that something will appear to the outside. But let's head in. So that we can be protected from the elements. And we'll keep an eye open. And I'll show you why. If you go in here and you go to your fauna, you see if I can get all six of these, I get a 1500 nanite bonus. Nanites are very handy to have when you are purchasing things in like space stations and stuff like that. So they're good. It's good mineral to have. You also get Quicksilver, but we'll get to that later. All right. And you notice this is an interesting system here. It looks like we have one, two, three, four, five planets and a moon. The moon orbits the planet we're on right now. So that'll be interesting. This looks like it might be a really cool system to be in. All right. Taking another look around. I just need one red dot. And by all means, look underground or look towards the ground or above you and around you. Because you never know where these little red dots might appear. Doesn't look like anyone wants to appear here right now, so I think we're going to give up. Yeah, let's give up and go ahead and head back. Alright, our ship is that way. You'll notice right there, there's our ship. And if you hold down the E button, you can highlight it. So it'll always show up on your scope and let you know where you are in relation to the, the item that you circled. In this case, our ship. Nope, didn't quite make it. There we go. Okay. So it's teaching us how to analyze things. We can analyze these rocks here, for instance, but I want to analyze something else. Let's analyze the plant. Yeah, that plant right there. We're going to analyze that. It has a secondary element, which happens to be condensed carbon. All right. So we've done that, and you see that was one of the things it was telling us to do. We have to go find our ship now. I'm going to go ahead and grab these two. Got them. Oh, it looks like we have some de deuterium. Is that right? Yes. Let's use that. And we'll get a running start and head out. By all means, you can go over the hills too and you can get another running start if you need to. Oh, jetpack surge failed. Uh, is, is fading. So we would use our own minerals to... Or fuel to get where we're going. But that's okay. We did pretty good. Uh, looks like we've got frozen tubers up there, too. I think I'm going to grab some while we're here. Life support's down to about halfway now. Every time you use your jetpack, you're using a little bit of life support, too. Just keep that in mind. Ooh. Sweet root behind there. There we go. We'll grab some of that, too. Let's grab some of this oxygen while we're here. Again, I'm in the mode, uh, the mood of, uh, or the kind of person who, when they play, they try to gather up as many resources as they can while they're at it. Now, we may get hit by another storm on the way back. Because I'm, as I say, dilly dallying. Oh, more dihydrogen. Let's go ahead and grab it. Oh, it looks like we got one of those buried things. Let's go ahead and grab that. Buried tech. We'll grab that, too, once we get all this dihydrogen up. Barite is going to be very, very handy to get, too. So as you come across those rocks, too, you might as well get some of those. All right, where'd it go? Nope, oh, right there. I don't think we can dig it out. Oh, we don't even need first person to get this one. There we go. That salvage data, well, I got four of them out of that one. Oh, that was good. Four is the maximum you can get. So, as you can get it, get it. More oxygen. There we go, got all three. Now we're going to get the plant. 
We should get a little over 100 every single time. Yep, 99 that time. I lied. A little more dihydrogen. Now, as you get dihydrogen, sometimes it will give you crystals too. Doesn't happen all the time. But I like to have plenty of the dihydrogen in my inventory because we do need it. All right, we got ships flying overhead, kind of nice ones. All right, well, looks like we're back to our ship. All right, you remember that uh, buried tech over here? Let's try grabbing it. We can't grab it this way. We'll have to go into first person. And there we go. And it's probably going to give us two. Oh, it gave us three that time. How much do we get all total? Let's check it out, shall we? Eleven. Very handy, and you see it's very expensive items too, so they're worth a lot of money. Um, so it's always good to get those. So there's our hermetic seal. Um, let's get our life support up to snuff. Alright, 82% is much better. This helps our hazard protection, so we can bring that up if we want, but we're about to get in our ship. Okay. Hit the tab button, and we now have a hermetic seal in our inventory, so we're going to repair the pulse engine. We're done. And now it kicks us out and tells us that our launch thruster is critically damaged. We need 50 pure ferrite, so we have to be able to create some of that. We can't really harvest it with our laser. And we need a dihydrogen jelly. So it's going to tell us next what to do. Hold on. Okay, it tells us to hit E to exit the ship, and we need to get dihydrogen jelly. Okay. So to do that, pay attention. It says craft it, right? So let's craft it. There's our dihydrogen jelly, and if we go back to our starship, we can now repair that portion. Now, the next thing it tells us to do is to get pure ferrite. To do that, we need a portable refiner. To make one of those, if you hit the Z button, you'll notice you now have a portable refi refiner we can make. It requires 30 oxygen. Glad, glad we got some of that. And one metal plate. To make a metal plate, we have to make that ourselves. And it's made with 50 ferrite dust, so that's why you need the ferrite. So now we can make a portable refiner. Alright, good deal. Now to do this, what we do is we go into our portable refiner. We know it needs fuel. Fuel comes in carbon or condensed. If you put condensed carbon in it and you pick up your refiner later, it'll, re it'll return it to you as regular carbon. So you may not want to do that just yet. I want to hold on to my condensed. And then I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to find my ferrite dust. I need 50, right? Well, 135 is a little too much, so I'm going to drop this number down to 50. There we go. And we're going to make that. you notice it's a one-to-one -one ratio, as it tells you over here. And 50 we've made. I'm going to put my ferrite dust back, a pure ferrite back, and we're going to pick up our refiner. And the refiner, as you can see, appears in your inventory right here. So you carry it with you wherever you go. Very handy to have. So, good thing to carry around. Alright, let's put this in our ship, this tritium. Alright, good. I'm going to put the gold in there too. It's valuable, but I'm going to need that later. And there's our pure ferrite. We go to our starship. We can now repair the last item. And there it is. There's the music you get indicating that everything is functional and you're, you can return to your ship. All right. Do we have any animals to scan while we're here? Does not look like it. Okay, so we may find some later on. All right. All systems functional. Seek answers among the stars. Press W to take off. If you press and hold W, you'll see we've launched. Now you can stay in this view, you got a lot of good information, including on the left, all the way around to the right, including our radar screen at the at the bottom. But I prefer to fly in a first person mode, so if I go to the settings, utilities, and you'll see switch starship view, I usually set that to a hotkey number one by pressing press and hold control and press a number button. In my case, number one is my hotkey for first third person view. Third, first, third, first, you get the idea. Okay. And we want to go up to the stars. So let's go ahead and head up. We may come back to this planet later. Kind of a nice planet, to be honest. As much as it's cold and has storms, it's kind of a good planet to start on. All right. Congratulations. We are in the Diviest system. We discovered this. The Ovist system. And you'll see we have some planets we can look at. 
Now it tells us to test some star system, test our, uh, pardon me, test our starship uh, systems. Test flight control. So we're going to thrust with W. Okay. Once it turns into a one, let go. Test boots with with L left shift. This gives you a faster speed. And in case you're wondering, let's go back to first person. You notice the bottom left, 250 units. If I hold this down, we can do, there it is, 360, 365. But we hit the boost. We can go over 1,000, 2,000. See, we can go much, much faster. Okay? Last one is the pulse drive. So if we press and hold the space bar, it can't even tell us how fast we're going. This is the best way to travel between. Now, one thing you'll get that I don't have right now is pulse lines. And I did a special mod so you don't see those because it messes up the videos when they're recording. All right, looks like we have a message coming in. So we hit the X button. You see our communicator's there, so we're going to hit it. And it says override on the screen, 16, 16, 16, 16. That's interesting. Incoming transmission, source 4925B. You remember the first one was A inside that building, right? Here's B. Please identify yourself. I'm... I'm going to go ahead and identify myself. You are not alone. Follow the bzz. The broadcast ends as strangely as it begins. The final piece of the signal appears to be a set of planetary coordinates. We're going to input the coordinates. So this is going to take us to a planet. Looks like the one straight ahead of us. So let's take a look while we're in our ship. If you look at the planet and you hit the C button, it'll give you a scan and you can discover what it is. This is a paradise planet. Excellent. Paradise planets are, as you might imagine, paradises, and they don't have any weather system issues or any problems. If I look at this planet all the way over here, one of the rings around it, looks like it has water, and I do a scan of that one. This tells me it's a hazy planet, so it's probably uh, humid. I got some storms. But it has salvageable scrap, copper, paraffinium, and sodium. This one has copper, paraffinium, and salt instead of sodium. Looks like we have a planet over here. If you look at our radar at the bottom, you see your planets are on a plane. If you go up and down, a line appears as to which way they need, they need to be in order to find them. So this planet, very far out there, 1,700 blocks out. It's not small, it's just far away. It's a webbed planet. It's got copper, gold, and silver. It sounds like it's good, but trust me, that means a very weird planet. Here's the planet we came from. You already know it had salvageable scrap on there. That's going to be very. That's very nice stuff to have because you can actually uh, the things you get from the salvages is worth a lot of money. Now, if you look closely at the map at the bottom, you'll see that there's something straight to the left that's supposed to be right there, but we can't see it. So that's the moon for this planet. We'll check it out in a minute. Here's the other planet in our system. Tiosk. It's a molten planet, so we know it's hot. It's got volcanoes on it. Copper, pyrite, and salt. And then finally we come back around to our other planet over here. Let's check out the moon real quick. I am just curious as to what it has, so we're going to actually pulse around it. The lines you see in space that go left to right that are going on these different angles, those are called trade routes or hyperspace, or pardon me, pulse lanes. A lot of trade ships will go across those, so if you stop within one of those, there's a good chance you're going to run across some ships that'll pop up in the play. Freighter, things like that. So there it is. Unknown moon. Let's scan it and see what we get. It's a paradise moon. Ooh. That's good to know. So we can probably create a base there too if we want. So we'll decide where we want to go. We haven't decided yet. So let's go to the place it tells us to, which is over here. Now, as we get to this planet over here and we come to a landing, we are going to go ahead and end this episode. So this will be the end of our first episode. We've escaped the planet. We've started the first storyline, the first portion of our storyline. And I've been as descriptive as I can possible to tell you what you need to do as you go along. Now, if you pulse at uh, something like this, it will actually guide your ship to it. You're free to fly around anywhere you want. You can head towards the sun if you wish, though you'll never reach it. Just a little hint there. Um, but you can go anywhere you want. Okay, we're going to level off. And pulse our way in. Not pulse, but we're actually going to use our thrusters. I'm going to go back out of first person. You notice at the top, bottom left, it's got coordinates. Those are planetary coordinates, plus and minus. 
So we're in the northern hemisphere at about 53 and dropping, and we're in the... Looks like the eastern hemisphere at negative 50. Alright. Now, this is an approximate location. So as we slow down and get close, it'll tell us to start searching for what we're looking for. See? Now, if you do a scan with your scanners, you might find that there's several buildings nearby. This one's over here, so I don't know. It might be up here. Let's do one more scan. Ah, there's one up above. Let's check it out. This could be it, but I doubt it. Let's go ahead and land and we'll take a look around. It might be over there. Now, if you get out of your ship... Okay, it tells us that you've made first contact on this planet. And you take a look. Look at that temperature. 62.3 degrees, 62.2. Very nice. Let's scan an animal real quick so we know how many animals they've got. One of nine. Okay, good. So, what we can do is you see analysis mode, one, three, like that. If you do the three or the one, you go to the other other side, it'll tell you where your target is and that it's in range. So my guess is that's our target. So there we go. We happen to choose correctly. Okay, let's check out the broken tech. The sparking wires of the machine generate a signal, tapping out its broadcast into the void. Whoever left the message is long gone. Decipher the signal. Decoding. 16, 16, 16. Entry, 4925. C. No fuel in... Bzz. Failed to reach station. Hazard protection low. No choice but to... Bzz. Underground. Bzz. Deployed base computer. As well as the log entry, the signal contains plans for a base computer and a terrain manipulator, two very important items. With any luck, the base computer will hold more information about whoever is leaving these messages. We extract the plans. So there's our first item, base computer, and our second item, the terrain manipulator. That helps us dig. Okay, so we got our first items. You'll notice that we do have something buried under here. Let's go ahead and grab it. Same thing, we go into first person. If you look down, you should be able to pick it up. It looks like we got two this time. You never get one. It's either two, three, or four. So, we're going to check over here, see if there's anything here. No, nope, all these containers are broken. I'm going to do this. That's a save point. But it gives you something. It also gives you a few nanites. See, restore point. Navigation data, and... 10 nanites. Every single time. Alright, so there we go. And it looks like we have a very pretty planet we've landed on. No water on this planet, but we got a lot of stuff. So let's go ahead and, and as a save point too, if you want to do this, if you head over here, jump in your ship, back out, and you see you got a restore point. And then you can come back and you can pick up where you left off. So at this point, I want to say goodbye to everybody. Thank you for watching. This is, a, like I said, a brand new series that we're starting. And uh, we're going to go ahead and make this my main save from this day forward. So take care, everybody, and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye now.